All right, continuing uh, video number three today. Edward says, "God, okay, so I'm, he's quoting a Bible verse. Okay, I think there will eventually be a physical element to the mark with the beast." Well, I'm sorry, Edward. That's you're gonna think that, but you're never gonna see that. Uh, the forehead scanning, uh, temperature scanning, you saw introduced in 2020 is conditioning for that day. And I do hope I'm wrong. You are wrong. So yeah, your hope and your dreams come true, buddy. You're wrong. It's never going to happen. It's not coming anytime soon. It's not coming anytime later. <laughs> as far as the sons of God go. All right. Now, I do think, you know, it's fair to make these correlations. Okay, so there, so uh, there's this um, bird flu or what do you call it? H1N1 or coronavirus. That's what it is. All right, so they come up. It's the flu. They come up with a new name and everybody thinks it's a different disease. It's not even a, it's a, it's a common cold. I mean, if you know people that get the coronavirus who aren't sick, what you got is the common cold. All right? Sometimes the common cold turns into a flu. You get temperature and all. They feel terrible. There are variations of it, but it's still the same thing. It's not a new illness. All right, now you get off of that stuff. Drives me nuts. Okay, so as far as the sons of God go, but as many as received him, to them gave. He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Yes, sir. For unto which the angel said, At any time thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? Question mark, and again to him. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be a son. Question mark. So the pre flood sons of God are believers. No. Yes, that is correct grammar. Sons of God have eternal life, a.k.a. never die. That's true now. Uh, it wasn't true then because there was never a promise that they would never die before the flood. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. Is there anything whereof it may be said? Uh, <clears throat> that's a good question right there. All right. All right, so I just, I mean, I, this is a great, uh, great comment right here. Just to clarify one more time, the promise of everlasting life was not given to the people before the flood. This happened after the flood. Before the flood, they were given a great opportunity to do it all themselves without God, and they blew it. The same thing applies today. If you think you can do it all, all by yourself without God's help, you're gonna, you're blowing it, and you're gonna blow it, and you've already blown it. And you need a savior. Bottom line, we all need a savior, and all that stuff that happened before the flood should be evidence that you need us, that we need a savior. We can't do it on our own. Not even the, not even if you lived hundreds of years. Not even if you lived a thousand years. And you had everything you could ever ask for, you're still going to blow it. All right. Whether it's just Adam and Eve in the garden, they blew it. And it all, you know, all these billions of people before the flood live in hundreds of years and having everything they could ever ask for, and they still blew it. Bottom line is, we can't do it without God. Okay, so I don't know about that. Is there, okay. All right. So is there anything new? Uh, because the Bible says, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, there's no, no, there is no new thing under the sun. All right. So, and let's see. Oh, what am I looking for? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In Revelation 21, and he that sat upon a throne said, Behold, I make all things new. 
And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. So, <clears throat> what we have today, you know, under the sun, in this world, um, there is no, no new thing. But Jesus makes all things new. He makes a new creature. You know, he rebuilds the temple. And he makes us a new creature. And, um, you know, when he returns, there's going to be a new heaven and new earth. And like he says, behold, I make all things new. Now, I don't think you should take this statement lightly. So, I mean, to me, that's interesting, really. Um, so, uh, I hope that answers your question right there. It has been already full time. So, it depends on exactly what you're referring to. You know, if you want to come up with a new gizmo, if you will, a new invention, you know, uh, like an alarm clock that gives you the weather as soon as you wake up or whatever, whatever kind of, you know, whatever kind of new invention you want to come up with, uh, it's not really going to be new. But what Jesus does, guaranteed, it's going to be new. He makes you a new creature right now, but then uh, when he returns, boy, oh boy, I think we're going to find out exactly what he means when he says, Behold, I make all things new, or all things are become new. All right, I appreciate that. God's grasshopper, where? What is the temple of God? Know ye not that the temple of God... Oops, hold on a second. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Oh, when you shall therefore see the bomb. Oh, this is going to be a great comment here. When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by a Daniel prophet, let no man deceive you by any means. It's not come a falling away. Who opposes? Talking about the Pope. So where does the man of sin sit? In the in the temple which is in the people. Well, hold on. Let me. Consider what you're saying first. He had power to give the life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. All right. You look at your phone. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, huh? You look at your phone, you got an image on your phone, and uh, you hit the volume control on your phone, you got an image that speaks. All right. The beast is an image. Oops. Like a hologram. What? Well, there we go. Or an image on a video. There you go. Make it simple. Great. Grasshopper, make it simple. It speaks through this and people worship it. People, if you look at the word worship in terms of respect, I think I've, you know, when I was a kid, for whatever reason, I thought worship meant to fall down on your knees and, you know, say Allah for, uh, you know, praise, uh, praise God or whatever, you know, just all this sort of act, this motion of you know, wave, getting down on your knees and waving your arms and all this and that. And that is a form of worship, but that's not the only uh, definition of the word worship. It could be a civil deference uh, or a, uh, am I saying that right? Or just simply respect. All right. All right. So, uh, it's there as plain as day. Right. The abomination that makes desolate is something that changes the temple. No, no. Uh, definition of desolate is barren, lifeless. Yeah, that's true. The human body will be changed and it will make people lifeless. That is silly. All right. It, the vaccine is not going to turn you into a crocodile. It really isn't. But when you don't believe in Jesus Christ, when you reject Jesus Christ, when you are not born of God, you are desolate. That's what it means. This desolation means to be without God or to be barren without God. And if you don't have God, you are lifeless. All right, so you got to look at this in terms of spirituality and not physical zombies, right? And I, I get what you're saying. But uh, you're never going to see zombies walking around. You're never going to see this idea that there are cro half crocodile, half humans. All right. That's it. Time's up.